a wicked man hardens his face. But as for the upright, he establishes his way. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share together from Proverbs chapter 21, verse 29. Another contrast between the wicked man and the person who follows righteousness, the one who is upright. And ultimately, he's saying that the way of the upright person is a successful way. But the way of the wicked man will prove disastrous. He persists in his wickedness. He hardens his face. He does not heed instruction, but is determined to go his own way. There are several things that come to mind as we read this. First of all, we all have a conscience. The scripture talks about those who have a good conscience and those who have a seared conscience, one that is no longer sensitive because it has been hardened. The first time that you see something evil, you will shrink back from it. But if you justify the evil and experience it again and again, then after a while it has no more impact on you and your conscience has been hardened. So the upright person is one who will keep his conscience tender. He will always want to maintain a good conscience. And Paul is one who says that he has kept his conscience clear before God. How do you do that? By always seeking the things that please the Father. Whenever you do something, or you see something, or experience something that is bad, you refer the matter to the Lord. If it's your sin, then you confess your sin. We have the example of a very wise man, Solomon himself. With all his wisdom, he failed in the end because he compromised his conscience. The many wives that he had asked for places of worship in Jerusalem. And so he gave them places of worship in Jerusalem because they were not followers of the living God, but of false gods. And in our tolerant Western society, we have that same attitude. Yes, of course, you can have a place of worship. You don't have to worship my God. You can worship your God. That was step one. But these women then said, will you come with me to worship my God? And so he went along with them. And so he then became a worshipper of false gods. Even though he knew the real God, he gave credence to the false gods. That's what he had done when he had built their altars in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was to be the city where the name of the Lord resided. But Solomon, by filling it with temples to false gods, obscured the purpose of the city. He didn't keep his conscience pure. And when the Lord revealed that Solomon would be, would be punished for this, in that some of the kingdom would be taken away from his children and given to a man called Jeroboam, he thought to defeat God's judgment by executing Jeroboam. Well, you can't defeat God. Jeroboam fled to Egypt, where he was kept safe until Solomon died. He then came back as an opposition leader against Rehoboam, and Rehoboam would not compromise his plan, and so the nation split. Jeroboam had ten tribal areas under his control. Rehoboam was left with two. So Solomon hardened his face towards the Lord. This demonstrates the deceptiveness of sin. For Solomon has warned us, but Solomon fell before the same trap that he warned us of. This contrasts with David, his father, who also sinned, but when he sinned, he confessed his sin. He acknowledged, before you I have sinned. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. And the Lord forgave his sin, but he still had to experience the consequences that flowed from his sin. But his relationship with God was restored. And so it is with us if we confess our sin. He is faithful and just to forgive our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But there's a general principle here, that the Lord resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Therefore we are to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he will lift us up. 
For there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so there is a narrow way that Jesus spoke about. It is the way of faith. It is the way of trust. It is the way of obedience. And it is the only way that leads to the Father's presence. There are many alternative ways that people like to go. They are wicked ways because in going those ways they are disobeying the word of God and in not turning back when they are given the opportunity to repent then they are hardening their face against the Lord. They are saying I know better than God because sometimes our situation appears completely hopeless. I just read a little bit of Pilgrim's Progress while on holidays and Pilgrim and Hopeful were travelling on the way and it was a difficult way and they saw a stile over a fence and if you looked over the fence you saw the path was much easier it was not so stony and rough and the path was beside the path they were travelling and so they decided they would go over the stile and enjoy the smoother path but they were trespassing the giant's territory Disaster struck them. He imprisoned them. He beat them cruelly. He suggested they should commit suicide rather than endure more punishment at his hand. Christian and hopeful, though, chose to trust in God and eventually escaped. The wicked man relies on his own judgment, his own understanding in making his decisions, whereas the upright man relies upon the Lord and his way is established the proverb has he with a little h he establishes his way but it could also be read with a big h God establishes the way of the righteous because the righteous is walking with the Lord walk by the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh Paul says Jesus says Take up your cross daily and follow me. Don't love this life and forfeit eternal life. And it is true that God's people will go through many difficulties on their way to the kingdom. The road is rough, but we must enter the narrow gate and follow that difficult road that leads to life, if that's where we want to go. A wicked man hardens his face. He looks for the easier road, the soft road. He does not heed the advice of the Lord. This is the way, walk in it. The upright person does not rely on his own judgment, does not rely on his own resources, does not rely on himself, but relies on the Lord. And so heeds the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Follow me and I will make you a fisher of men as he said to Peter in particular, but all the disciples. Many began to follow him, and when they found the road was rough and hard, they turned away. It was too hard for them. But the upright person, the person who is right in his relationship with God, will persist in the narrow, difficult way, the way that leads to life, the way that keeps us in fellowship, with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm reminded of Paul's exhortation in Hebrews, Therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed to us, by those who heard him. We are offered the way to go, the way to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, and the instructions are given to us in the scriptures. But if we are disobedient to that way, or take our eyes off our master and drift away, how shall we escape the judgment that follows? 